Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the prototype for Guardians of Fire. Uh, this is a dungeon crawler with a difference, shall we say. Uh, first off, it's a massive box. I can't imagine it will be this big when it comes uh, to actual production. But the Guardians of Fire is all about some warrior priests of uh, the Zoroastrian religion up against Angra, the uh, sort of epitome of darkness compared to light. So let's have a look and see what we get. Oh, apart from strain from opening these things, get our rule books. Have a look at those in a moment. We get a bit of protective foam and we get two trays of miniatures. Now again, this is all prototype. Um, so we'll go through these with a pinch of salt because when it hits production, they may not be the same. Um, but in this tray, you can see things like uh, some of the dice that you use in the game. So body, mind, spirit. Um, there's also darkness dice as well and shield dice for defensive abilities. You get a set of tokens, uh, the little sort of, not sure what you call them, little Ludo ones that you use to determine the initiative order. You also get sets of tokens to uh, determine your actions for the turn, along with the various counters that you'll need. Have a look at some of these in a bit more detail. They're very nicely presented, all with a very sort of Eastern theme. You also get the darkness deck, which is used by the Angra player, because uh, it's a one against many game. So as you play through the scenario, um, you'll end up with one person will be attempting to stop the others. And it's a, a narrative scenario as well. So you have this sort of pull and push mechanic where the more you try and do as one of the priests, uh, or when I say priests, there are expansions coming which have other heroes in them. But one of the heroes, uh, if you try and do more and more, you're more likely to give the uh, player who's playing the Angra, the Darkness, more opportunity to uh, to get more stuff on the table. So it, it sort of rubber bands back, uh, which is nice. We get our little bags. The little bags, uh, which I believe are going to be color coded to the priests. Uh, contain a set of polyhedrals uh, and you also put your draw tokens in there. If you want to see how the game plays, you can either download the uh, rulebook uh, from the Kickstarter page, which is going to be live on Tuesday, or uh, you can have a look at the Let's Play we did. You have these markers, one for each of the heroes to keep track on their wounds. So little wound dials, I suppose, as they say. Also have some doors, trap doors and stairwells. And these represent the cone of evil. Certain scenarios will have particular places on the board that generate additional evilness. Uh, that needs to be dealt with. The second layer contains cards and miniatures. We'll leave the miniatures to the end and take a look at the uh, cards and other components first. So we have two gameplay uh, quick reference sheets. So on one side, it has the round sequence, which is the same for everyone, along with special rules. And on the other side, we have the experience, whether you're playing the heroes or the Angra. So whoever's playing the darkness or the dungeon keeper, whatever you want to call it, uses this one. We have the darkness tracker which we shall come back to in a moment. 
our four hero boards. And then some of our tiles. I won't go through all of these, but I will go through a couple. Because they're very nice. That's the one I'm after. My garden of delights. So, um, first off, boards are big. Again, while this is a prototype, I believe they will be remaining this size. Um, the miniatures themselves are going to be about 40 mil, 50 mil, something like that. Big figures require a big board. Uh, so you don't have to try and crush people into a specific place or try and get four people to stand on a one inch hex or whatever it happens to be. So all the tiles are 50 mil square uh, to make up for the 40 mil miniatures. As you can see, really nicely detailed, love the art design on them. And you go from the very sort of palatial grounds or the, uh, the grounds of the, I suppose, monastery or uh, religious area they're in, but you also have things like sort of slightly more extravagant banquet halls. Or this area where we've got a, a brazier that's been knocked over. And so you've got the lit area on one side and then the in darkened area on the other. Lovely little touches along the walls. You can see like a cobweb up here and the friezes um, with the various, I suppose, Syrian or uh, Near Eastern iconography. So Lamassu and the like. This beautiful marble throne room. A set of scrolls in the corner. And finally, we have a, I suppose, chamber. Not sure whether it's a bed chamber, an antechamber. You'll find out as you play through because it is a, a narrative game. So taking a look at our four heroes, as you can see, when you're playing, you have a focus slot and your action slots that you draw from the bag. Um, you also have these indented areas that can be upgraded so they are actually recessed uh, which I believe is how they're planning on doing the final versions of these as well. Um, as you gain experience these can also be upgraded for various costs and extra dice can also be inserted in so this gives you your starting character and the uh, sort of starting abilities that each of them have so they have uh, I suppose a slightly different setup You've got a healer, you've definitely got a leader, and you've got some DPS. There's not really a tank as such uh, for the initial starting characters. The Darkness player uses this board. And as they play through, depending on the scenario, they'll have certain cards um, for the, I suppose, minions of darkness. Um, interesting thing is when you're playing, you can draw a darkness card and move darkness forward. So this is the darkness tracker. If it reaches the end, darkness wins. And that scenario is a victory uh, and the heroes lose. So they never want to see it get this far. However, to summon monsters in, you insert them into a slot. So your first one is free and you can still draw a card and move the darkness forward. But then if I go to summon somebody else, I have to make a choice and I could limit my card draw to keep the darkness tracker moving, or I can keep my card draw, lose the darkness moving regularly, and then have to rely on the players generating darkness for me. Uh, the cards themselves for the monsters and minions as you can see are sort of a like a long bookmark affair and it tells you how many you're going to have whether it's five or two uh, their stat line and then also things like um, special rules and their attacks and that's the same for each of the different types so hunting parties of dogs cultists and uh, even ghouls. 
the rulebook itself is so this is the rulebook we used um, in the let's play I know there is some changes being made to the game simplifying it slightly but without losing the actual idea of, of how things play out but it's not a particularly long rulebook it is 24 pages uh, and fairly well explained throughout with the examples of melee attacks uh, the various actions that people can do so it's not an overly heavy book uh, as far as system goes although it's a, a quite a crunchy system when you get into it um, but let's take a look at some of the figures okay so we're going to start with our heroes first off we have Hormuzan the keeper of the fire uh, which is the or who is the leader of the heroes gorgeous figure that's billowing cape and as you can see design all the way around it so these are resin but they are going to be manufactured in plastic for the the final production they have her mazda's um, symbol on the front as well superbly well detailed next up is Ashkan, the Seeker of the Light. So again, even though these are four, I suppose, priests, they are uh, distinct and different enough between each of the sculpts. So you should be able to spot a, a distance who is who. Then we have our healer, Afshin. I absolutely adore the poses on these. Terrific set of figures. And then everybody's favorite, Babak. And the reason Babak is everybody's favorite is not just because he's a bit fiery it's also because he has the option to summon a phoenix so double the trouble for the forces of darkness again detailing is stunning on these nice detail on the wings and then the flames breathing out Beautiful, beautiful figure. Taking a look at some of the evil. We'll start with our cultists. Uh, Sisters of Sin, or Sisters of All Sin. So I believe there's a possibly a third cultist sculpt um, going to be unlocked. But essentially you've got a melee type and then one that is a ranged attacker. Who I think is the one playing the loot. Um, so they can pick away at people from a distance again terrific sense of movement and uh and just detail i love their diva diva masks the sort of horned skull beautifully wicked and exotic after them we have duzakis so a set of demon dogs which has got some bone showing through its flesh reminds me an awful lot of the uh, big dogs from ghostbusters we also have one of the Persian ghouls now there's going to be an alternative sculpt in the box for these which they've sent 
it through. So it's going to be more creepy crawly, less stocky. A bit of my packet material on it, fluffy. I think it's the eyeless look of these uh, Persian ghouls is particularly demonic. And this, uh, I'm not sure if it's a maw down the spine, but all the spines protruding and then the uh, detail running along the back of the, or the ridge of the back. A uh, ghoulish pair indeed. Then we have Zahak's Shadows. So these are one of the bigger uh, devas. Lightly armoured, very nimble and quick. Can do a, a lot of damage. And again, this one is also being accompanied with a new sculpt or a uh, secondary sculpt for the box they've sent through so currently that sort of wicked looking figure will be joined by this even more demonic looking fellow there's two wonderfully scythed swords however if you're looking for something with a bit more grunt a bit of uh, weight behind it then the Chosen of Akvan is the way to go. So brutal, no subtlety, no swift movement here. Again, intricate detail, spare dagger on the back. These sort of layers of something skinned around the armor. And of course, a set of human skulls. If the axe is too subtle for you, the alternate sculpt that will be included in the, the Kickstarter is this double, I suppose, sensor mace. Um, it's, it's certainly, it's a statement. I will give it that. You'll see him coming from a mile away and he is an absolute brute. No small dagger as a secondary weapon, no. Not when you can have a pair of cleavers that are about the size of a man's torso. Yep. Cleavers the size of a man's torso is the way to go. So there we have the Chosen of Akvan. And last, but by no means least, for the Forces of Darkness, is the darkness himself, Apush. The great deva of draft. And this is a stunning, stunning model. Although he does still fit onto a, I want to say 50 mil base. But he does tower over the leader of our heroes. Very intricate detail on the armor. These repeating skull patterns. Massively long whip and a uh, huge sickle, I suppose, as a secondary weapon. And then those uh, rather dramatic wings. Gorgeous figure. Now, there are a few other figures. In fact, I almost forgot one of the important ones. The Mother of Ghouls. This is Farouk Nahaz. And she's also getting a human version. So sometimes she's not as easily spotted in the streets. Slightly more easily spotted in this uh, 
demonic form with a lot of intricate jewellery and bodywork around her and uh, a tomb, presumably the first scenario tomb that got stolen. A wickedly looking lady. There will be a couple of expansion boxes. Uh, the Holy Order, uh, City of Darkness and who third that name escapes me however from the city of darkness i have a prototype of the head of the guards and also the assassin so starting with the guard captain beautifully detailed chain mail exquisitely defined little axe there and uh, I suppose a metal face plate or covering. Uh, Lamassu on the back of the shield, which from what I can see on the artwork and renders will also be on the city guards themselves. They will all have that, which makes sense. Guardian of Light, he even has it on his uh, chest as well. So we have this guard captain and then the assassin sweeping in with a very, uh, what you can say, Black Widow pose, except the current Black Widow doesn't like that pose, but does just look like she's landed possibly from a rooftop drop. Wicked looking dagger in one hand and this scimitar curving away in the other. Exquisitely detailed, and the veil across the face. So there we have it. The miniatures are absolutely stunning. Um, I know for the prototype, I think I've 30 ish or so miniatures in there, plus then the heroes. Um, the core box is going to include 50, uh, I think 51 now is the current contents for the core box. But it's worth checking out. Uh, definitely take a look at the playthrough video myself, Shay and Justin did because it's a, a fascinating little game with a lot of potential for long narrative storytelling sessions um, with you and your group. So let me know what you think of Guardians of Fire Below and this dive into the Near East. And uh, I'll be back soon. Bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.